Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. In the name of Allah, the beneficent, the most merciful. Praise be to Allah alone who praise man who seek his help. Whomsoever Allah guides is the truly guided one and whomsoever Allah leaves astray, no one can show him guidance. May the peace and blessings be upon Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. Dear viewers everywhere, welcome to a new episode of Correct Your Citation. This is your chance to learn how to recite the Quran properly in addition to learning the meaning of what we recite together, insha'Allah. In the beginning, I'd like also to welcome our guests here at the studio. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. And welcome to the program, and I hope that you studied uh, the previous two sessions of at tafqim wa tarqiq because insha'Allah we'll resume today. But in the first segment, we will recite a few verses since we're approaching and drawing near the end of the blessed surah, surah al-Kahf. So we'll learn a few, uh, the meaning of a few verses, insha'Allah, uh, trying to finish it up, maybe in this episode, or maximum, insha'Allah, by the next one. A'udhu billahi min ash-shaytan ar-rajim Wa tarakna ba'dahum yawma idhi yamuju fi ba'dhin Wa nufiqa fi al-suri fajama'nahum jam'a وعرضنا جهنم يومئذ للكافرين عرضا الذين كانت أعينهم في غطاء عن ذكري وكانوا لا يستطيعون سمعا أفحسب الذين كفروا أن يتخذوا عبادي من دوني أولياء إنا أعتدنا جهنم للكافرين نزلا With that we will begin learning the meaning of these verses, verse number 99 through 102. But before that, I want to tackle the meaning of verse number 98 once again. When Dhul Qarnayn completed the erection of the barrier to imprison and to restrict Ya'juj wa Ma'juj, he praised Allah the Almighty and He gave him the credit for that. Similarly, this is the trait of the true believers who humble themselves before Allah the Almighty, who do not admire themselves. Rather, Allah the Almighty is the one who admires them. Allah the Almighty says, فَلَا تُزَكُّوا أَنفُسَكُمْ هُوَ أَعْلَمُ بِمَنِ اتَّقَى You should not admire yourselves since Allah indeed is the one who knows who is much more righteous or who is indeed a righteous one. Also, he said, قَالَ هَذَا رَحْمَةٌ مِّن رَبِّهِ You see that? It pleases you. This is all the mercy from my Lord. فَإِذَا جَاءَ وَعْدُ رَبِّي جَعَلَهُ دَكَّاءَ وَكَانَ وَعْدُ رَبِّي حَقَّ This is very interesting. Uh, he said, once the appointed time, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala appointed for Ya'juj wa Ma'juj to come out, جَعَلَهُ دَكَّا Allah will level this strong, powerful barrier. Decades and centuries and millenniums after millenniums, Ya'juj wa Ma'juj have been trying to dig a hole through its lower part and they failed. Trying to scale it or climb it, still they failed. فَمَسْطَاعُوا أَنْ يَظْهَرُوهُ وَمَا اسْتَطَاعُوا لَهُ نَقْبَ The Prophet ﷺ said in a hadith that's collected by Ibn Majah and narrated by the great companion Abu Hurairah may Allah be pleased with him. He said that Ya'juj wa Ma'juj are continuously trying on every single day to dig a hole through the lower part of the wall or the barrier that's erected by Dhul Qarnayn. 
and every day they work hard until they make a hole where they could see the sunlight. So the one who's in a charge for them, their leader would say, well, now let's go to rest and in the morning we'll resume. So when they go to sleep and come back to resume, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will seal it back and will restore it even much stronger than it was. And this will continue to take place on every single day. They dig until they see the sunlight and then they go to rest, try to resume next morning and it will be sealed once again, restored even stronger than it was. Until approaching near the end of this life, and prior to the Day of Judgment, because this is one of the major signs of the Day of Judgment, mm-hmm. there will be the appearance of the false Messiah, then his defeat by Jesus, the son of Mary, who would lead the Muslim Ummah, and defeat the false Messiah and his followers. Then, while they are celebrating this joyful moment of defeating the false Messiah, there will come out Ya'juj wa Ma'juj. Where everybody to save himself, including Isa alayhi salam, Jesus the son of Mary, and his followers of the believers, have to hide and take a shelter. They will take a shelter in the Mount of Attur. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will inspire them to do so. And they will spread mischief and corruption on earth. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that they will devour all the provision that exists on earth to the point that they will dry up all the water. They pass by a lake called Tabariya. They will dry up all its water. They will drink it all. To the point that the last one of them, by the time he arrives to the lake to drink, he'll say, the lake was just full of water. What happened to it? So accordingly, the believers will be hiding. And Isa alayhi salam, and the Muslims along with him, would invoke Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give them a relief out of this calamity and trial. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will destroy them in a very simple way. Simple for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But for us, it's a miraculous way. Why? After they fire arrows towards the heaven, and their arrows will return back with blood. blood. Mm -hmm. So they will proclaim saying that we defeated all the people of the earth, and we have the the upper hand over the people of the heaven. They will be deceived. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will destroy them not with weapons of mass destruction. Mm-hmm. Rather, He would send against their necks some kind of worms. It's called a nuf. Yeah. These worms would devour them until all of them, the very first and the very last, these two huge, humongous nations will be destroyed and will die all of a sudden. There is another calamity, which is that their bodies, their deceased, would fill the entire earth and would rotten and would smell until the beasts of the earth would grow fat out of eating from their bodies. Once again, it is the blessings of the invocation. Isa alayhi salam, Jesus the son of Mary and the Muslims would invoke Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to relieve them from their rotten bodies. So Allah would send huge birds would pick up their deceased mm-hmm. and would throw them in the seas and the oceans. But still it smells. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will send down heavy rain to wash off the entire earth from the rotten bodies. Then there will be a barakah, a blessings that would fill the entire earth during the time of Isa alayhi salam. Once again, these are some of the major signs that would appear drawing near the end of life and the appearance of the Day of Judgment. Once, in a sound hadith, narrated by Zainab bint Jahsh, may Allah be pleased with her, who was one of the Prophet's wives, the mother of the believers. She said, once the Prophet ﷺ entered upon me, and he was so worried, and he said, what Usama? He said, La ilaha illallah. This is a beautiful vic to be said and uttered during calamities, fear and Whenever somebody is frightened or worried, La ilaha illallah. Also, you say, La hawla wa la quwwata illa billah. There is no mighty nor power but with Allah. So the Prophet, peace be upon him, said, La ilaha illallah. Wailun lil Arab min sharrin qad iqtarab. Woe to the Arab from an evil that has become very close and near, that's approaching them. So Zainab, may Allah be pleased with her, said, What is the matter, O Prophet of Allah? 
He said, today, an opening like this, and he circled, he made a circle with the thumb and the index finger, like that, it is that small. An opening like that has been opened. Yet Juj and Ma'juj have managed to make a hole in this barrier, which was erected and constructed by Dhul Qarnay, and it was as small as that. So the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa considered this a calamity. And they're coming out uh, afterward, it would be a big calamity. So Zainab radiyallahu ta'ala anha wa ardaha said, Ya Rasulallah, anahliku wa feena salihoon. And this is a very important question. Will we get destroyed while we have so many righteous people amongst us? Wouldn't Allah save us and rescue us because of the virtues of the righteous ones amongst us? The Prophet sallallahu answer was, Naam, idha kathur al khabath. Yes, that might happen whenever evil becomes widespreading and overwhelming. Whenever committing sins become overwhelming and widespread. So we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us from the trial and the calamity of the false Messiah mm -hmm. and Ya'juj wa Ma'juj and from every trial in this life and in the hereafter as well. Mm -hmm. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in verse number 99 وَتَرَكْنَا بَعْضَهُمْ يَوْمَ إِذٍ يَمُوجُ فِي بَعْضٍ وَنُفِخَ فِي الصُّورِ فَجَمَعْنَاهُمْ جَمْعًا on that day, the word Yawm Idin refers to the Day of Judgment. Ya'juj wa Ma'juj, when they come out, they shall leave them, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said that we shall leave them to surge like waves on one another because of their magnitude number. They will be like waves of people, these two huge nations. And the trumpet will be blown and we shall collect them. Collect whom? Everything that exists. All the creatures of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala all together. Basically, Ahmad, Israfil alayhi salam will blow in the trumpet twice. Once approaching the end of this life so that every living creature would die. Yes. This is the first nafkha wa nufiqa fi sur And then when everything is dead, for the resurrection once again, everything but now not just those who died, Right at the nafkha or when Isra feel blown in the trumpet? No. From Adam alayhi salam and even before, till the very last person whose life on earth will be resurrected. Then the second blown in the trumpet, everything will be resurrected. Humans, jinn, animals for the day of accountability. وَعَرَضْنَا جَهَنَّمَ يَوْمَ إِذٍ لِلْكَافِرِينَ عَرْضًا the next verses will speak about the fate of the disbelievers, Al-Kafirin, who disbelieved in the oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, those who did not recognize his unity of lordship and his unity of worship accordingly. So he says, and on that day we shall present hell to the disbelievers, plain to view, they cannot escape it. Who are they? Some people are uh, having doubts that my nice friend who is not a Muslim, I cannot imagine that he or she will end up somewhere other than in heaven because mm -hmm. they are super nice. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala answers all those kind of questions in the coming verses. There are two senses and faculties that were mentioned in this verse. The sight and the hearing. Normally Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala provided us with these two faculties in order to be able to see and hear. And the benefit of seeing and hear, hearing in order to reflect and ponder and recognize the truth about objects, about things, and about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But unfortunately, the disbelievers had a veil over their eyes and over their hearings. They did not see nor did they hear the truth, the evidences which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed in the Qur'an. And the miracles which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have shown us around us, uh, in everything that exists around us. أَفَلَا يَنظُرُونَ إِلَى الْإِبِلِ كَيْفَ خُلِقَتْ 
وإلى السماء كيف رفعت وإلى الجبال كيف نصبت وإلى الأرض كيف سطحت Don't they look around? See how Allah created camels, the heavens, the mountains, and the earth. This is an invitation in order to reflect. So they neglected all of that. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in verse number 102. To those who disbelieve, think that they can take my servants, my servants such as those who have worshipped Jesus, the son of Mary, or worshipped Mary herself, or those who worship angels, or other prophets, or even idols, Jesus, the angels, Mary, Muhammad, and even the statues which they created by their hands, they all worship Allah. So the, those people, the disbelievers, have taken those as awliya, supporters, they worship them as deities instead of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, or along with Allah, may Allah protect us. As a result of that, إِنَّا أَعْتَدَنَا جَهَنَّمَ لِلْكَافِرِينَ نُزُلًا Indeed, we have prepared Jahannam, one of the names of the fire of hell, as an entertainment for the disbelievers. That is going to be their eternal abode. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect all of us. Amen. Then, inshallah, in the next episode, we'll continue talking about who are the greatest losers with regards to deeds. Not doing bad deeds, rather, they had done so much good and righteous deeds, but all their deeds have been wasted simply because they did not pay them to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah forgive us our sins, and inshallah, after the short break, we'll resume with a new rule of the rules of the tajweed, the tafkhim, and the tarqiq of the letter ra. Please stay tuned. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Recite it every day and do read it loud. Many people trying to get together, but all their efforts were in vain because of ignoring or turning away from this great foundation. We see many people coming to the way of truth, following the guidance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but later on, they get off track. What is the reason behind that? Unity is a result, it's not a cover-up. We have to be united from inside. And Allah made this clear in the Quran when He said, وَأَطِيعُ اللَّهَ وَأَطِيعُ الرَّسُولَ You know, sometimes it's important to take a break. We need to take a break. Take a break from what? From the everyday things to look at what we're really doing as Muslims. That's why we said we really need to have this program for you and for me to take a break right here on Huda TV. Stay with us because we've got a lot coming up on Take a Break. If you look into the early tafsir, 
early exegesis of the Quran, you will find that uh, all the Mufassirin were trying to find out where are the seven earths. Earthquakes, natural or artificial, can delineate the boundaries between seven different zones within the earth. The, the conclusion that we have seven different layers within the earth came to not only the 20th century. The true believer would prostrate down in obedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The blessings of that prostration will reach the seventh earth. Recite it every day and do read it loud. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh and welcome back. Uh, Inshallah, we resume talking about at tafkhim or tatiq, this very interesting subject. Uh, can you define at tafkhim? What does it mean? At tafkhim is uh, uh, using the amount of the letter or uh, fattening it. Fattening, yes. exactly. Usama, at tarqiq, definitely it is opposite thinning, yeah. right? To make thin. Can you give me one example of a letter that is fat? Ar-Rahman. Okay. The Ra, okay. Yes. Now, you brought to my mind another question, which is, we classified the Arabic alphabet, yes. the Arabic letters, into three categories with regards to at uh, tafkhim and at tarqiq fattening and thinning. Yes. Which group of letters are always mufakhama? They were put together in, in one phrase. Yes. Khus Perfect. Okay. And what are the letters? which sometimes are fat and sometimes we have to pronounce them as thin. Uh, ar and the Alam in Nafz al-Jalala. Exactly, the not the any lamb. The lamb of the word of majesty, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Hmm? And Al-Hamza. And uh, the Alif. Uh, now, uh, well, we're talking about Al-Alif al madiyah yes, the length uh, and Alif. Mm -hmm. So we got three letters. Ar-Ra, we already addressed the Alif, and Maddiya, mm -hmm. and the Lam of Lafd al-Jalala, and yes. today, inshallah, we resume with Ar-Ra, which sometimes Mufakhama, and sometimes is Muraqqaqa. Mm -hmm. And we we'll learn about all its cases. The Tafkhim of the letter Ra. The Ra has eight cases in which it has Tafkhim, and four cases in which it has Tarqiq, in two cases that sometimes we recite it as mufakhama and sometimes we recite it as muraqqaqa or thin. Let's begin by the eight cases of at tafkhim The first case in which the ra has to be mufakhama, I just said a ra. Yes. Do you think, yes or no, when I say ra, the letter ra is fat or thin? Why? What kind of vowel is on or under the letter Ra when you say Ra? Fatha. 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 Yes. So obviously the first case in which the Ra has tafkhim is when the letter Ra itself has Fatha. the vowel Fatha. Such as في سورة البقرة Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says about the month of Ramadan شهر را 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 ما ضانة النطس أسامة ضضاد is one of the tafkhim letters, yes. right? And al isti'la letters. Yes. Mm. Okay, yes. so it's yes. highly mufakhama. And the ra is mufakhama as well. And in between there is meme. The meme. Thin. And the meme is always thin. thin. So in order to pronounce two heavy letters, and in between a thin letter, sometimes people end up pronouncing the thin letter as mufakham as well. So mm. they say ramadana. Mm. And there is no ma at all. It is ma. Sama. Rama. Ra. Ma. Da. Ra. Ma. Da. Ra. Ma. Da. Shahr Ramadan alladhi unzil fihi al Quran. But Shaykh, it needs some practice to uh, pronounce it like that. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Right. And Tajweed is a science that you cannot learn it on your own. Yeah. Even if you memorize the text, 
that it is a science that would be taken by التلقي والمشافهة by listening by listening to the sheikh and by making mistakes before him then he will correct you and the sheikh could be a male or a female by the way one of the greatest shiukh of uh, uh, reciting the Quran even in the different dialects uh, in Egypt was a lady may Allah have mercy on her her name was Umm Sa'ad she passed away a couple of years back then the second case if it is a sakina so if the raw letter is sakin, and before it there is a letter that has a fatha on it. Yes. So if the raw itself is sakina, has sukun, and it's preceded by a letter, any kind of letter, as long as the preceding letter has a fatha, then the raw as well, a raw is sakina will be mufakhama, such as, قَالُوا يَا وَيْلَنَا مَنْ بَعَثَنَا مِنْ مَرْقَدِنَا Did you notice that? مِنْ مَرْقَدِنَا The ra is mufakhama. While the meme and the second meme are in a state of tarqiq. And there is gunna obviously. The ra itself which is highlighted in the red color, as you see it, has sukoon. But it is preceded by a letter that has fatha. So that right away will make the ra mufakhama. I want to hear it from you, Usama, please. Qalu. This verse lies in Surah Al-Kahf, obviously, chapter number 36. No, I think it's Surah Yasin. Uh, correct, Surah Yasin. Barakallahu feek. قالوا يا ويلنا من بعثنا من مرقدنا. Still the ra needs a little left in order to be مفخمة. If you say مر مرقدنا then it is مرقق. Okay. مرقدنا. Then the ma the mim now has become مفخمة. مرقدنا. مرقدنا. مِن مَرْقَدِنَا Excellent. بارك الله فيك. The third case of the eight cases in which the ra is always مفخمة, if it comes ساكنة and the letter before it has a سكون, well, are we going to look for even the letter that precedes the letter that comes before the ra? Yes. Why? Because the ra itself is ساكنة. And the letter before it is ساكنة. So we're going to look at the nearest neighbor that has a vowel. That vowel will determine the fate of the pronunciation of the letter ra. So if it has fatha, also letter will find if it has dhamma, in this case the ra as well is mufakhama. Look at this example. The first verse of Surah Al-Asr, chapter 103. If we stop at because if we continue, then وَالْعَصْرِ إِنَّ الْإِنسَانَ ضَرَاءُ will be with kasra. Yes. That's a tarqiq as we will learn in the future, inshallah. But when we start at the end of this ayah, which is one word, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is swearing by the time, I swear by the asr. Look at the ra. It is sakina. Any letter. Once we stop at it in this case, it will be sakin. Yes. Okay. Preceded by sakin. I don't care about the letter that precedes the ra. I care about the vowel that's mm -hmm. on it. It's another sukun. Mm -hmm. So we have to look further for the, the, the nearest letter, mm -hmm. which is lam, ayn, ayn that has fatha. Yes. So accordingly, the ra has to be mufakhama. Yes. So the first case, if the ra itself is مفتوح. having fatha, مفتوح. Yes. the second, the second, if the ra is sakina. But the preceding letter has fatha, and it's also mufakhama. And the third case, if the ra is sakina, and the preceding letter has sukun as well, then the one before that, if it has fatha, then it must be mufakhama as well. We recited fat. Wal-asr. Okay? Then the fourth case, it's an easy one. If the ra has dhamma or pesh, such as in Surah Al-Baqarah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, إِنَّ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا سَوَاءٌ عَلَيْهِمْ أَأَنذَرْتَهُمْ أَمْ لَمْ تُنذِرْهُمْ لَا يُؤْمِنُونَ 
The catch is in the word kafaru. Kafaru. These two letters are thin. Yeah. Definitely kafa. Okay? okay. They're not of the letters of tafkhim. Khusa. Dalqim. In addition to none of them is any of the letters which sometimes suffer of tafkhim and sometimes of tarqiq. The alif al maddiya, the lam of love al jalala, or the ra. So ka fa, but the ra itself is mufakhama here because it has dhamma. Recite it, yes, sir, please. In alladhina kafaru. It needs to be a little fatter. Kafaru. In alladhina kafaru. A little more, Ahmed. إن الذين كفروا، okay أسامة. إن الذين كفروا، بارك الله فيك. okay the fifth case is when the ra is sakina and now before even looking, do not look at the okay the screen. now you tell me if the ra is sakina and it's preceded by ضمة by ضمة by a letter that has ضمة once again it will be <laughs> you see, this is very interesting. That indicates that the neighbors do have effect. So that's why you have to choose good neighbors. <laughs> if you want to be fat, <laughs> live next to generous neighbors. <laughs> okay, and the letter before it has dhamma <laughs> such as okay, wal Quran al Azim, wal Quran al Azim. Okay, Usama. والقرآن العظيم. الأرف هيفير. والقرآن العظيم. والقرآن العظيم. Because the قاف itself is مفخمة. So you have the قاف and you have the راء. بثار. يلا ريس. Please. والقرآن. Very good. ما شاء الله. أحمد. والقرآن. Okay. جزاكم الله خيرا. The sixth case. Is when the ra is sakina and again preceded by sakin and preceded by a letter that has dhamma, such as in Surah Al-Asr, "In al-insan la fi khusr." Why? Because the ra, we call this kasr arid. It's a presented kasr. I'm sorry, it's a, why? Because it would, we would only recite it with kasr or zir if we continue. Yes. Mm. Such as, إِنَّ الْإِنسَانَ لَفِي خُسْرٍ إِلَّا خُسْرٍ إِلَّا In this case, the ra is definitely thin, very, very thin, because it has kasr. خُسْرٍ إِلَّا خُسْرٍ إِلَّا But now when we stop, the kasr is not permanent. So the sukun is arid as well, due to stopping arid. Yes. So if we stop, it has sukoon that is presented, preceded by a letter that has a sukoon, and the letter before that has dhamma, khu, 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 khusr. So the ra automatically is mufakhama as well. So how many cases left? Two. Two. Okay. Is when the ra is sakina and preceded by a presented kasra, this is... همزة الوصل. We spoke about همزة الوصل and همزة القطع before. همزة الوصل is whenever the همزة is pronounced only in case of reading something before it. When we when we start with it, but when we stop at it, when we connect it, when we connect it, it will be dropped. Such as. يا أيتها النفس يا أيتها النفس. There is an alif. It's called همزة وصل. وصل. It's like a bridge. If I want to begin with the word النفس, I will say النفس. Also, يا أيتها النفس المطمئنة رجعي. If I want to begin with it, I will say إي إرجعي. But now I connected it. So I will drop it and I will go to the letter before it. يا أيتها النفس المطمئنة ورجعي. It's preceded by همزة وصل. Preceded by ضمة. So that affects the ra itself and the ra accordingly will be 
مفخم as well such as في سورة يوسف ارجعوا 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 إلى أبيكم فقولوا فقولوا يا أبانا إن بنك سرق the catch is in the hamzat الوصل الوصل and once again to distinguish between hamzat الوصل and hamzat القطع قطع is always you see the hamza on top or on the bottom of the letter <تصفيق> and it is pronounced always whether you connect it whether you start with it but hamzat الوصل is only pronounced if you start with it such as Allah لفظ الجلالة the word of majesty Allah look uh, uh, uh. so I pronounce the hamza but when I put it in the sentence Bismillah I say Bismillah it's like I skip it that's why it's called the connecting hamza and now with the last case in the last remaining minute in the segment is when the ra is sakina and there is a kasra before it yet after the ra there is a letter of isti'la providing that letter of isti'la does not have a kasra it may have any vowel including the sukun but not the kasra and the best example to that is walaw nazzalna alayka kitaban fi Qirtasin. If if the, the ra is not followed by the ta, then in this case the ra will be definitely muraqqa because it's sakin and preceded by a kasra. But guess what? Because it's followed by a letter of isti'la. And we spoke about the letters of al isti'la in the last episode, so go back and review it. Uh, since unfortunately we ran out of time for this segment. Mm-hmm. So now remember this is in which the ra is always mufakhama and we will have a lot of fun examining the letter ra in various conditions in the Quran yet we would only focus on the ra which is mufakhama in today's practice as we just studied the eight cases of at tafqim brothers and sisters a short break and we'll return back inshallah very soon so please stay tuned recite it every day and do read it loud trying to get together, but all their efforts were in vain because of ignoring or turning away from this great foundation. We see many people coming to the way of truth, following the guidance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but they get off track. What is the reason behind that? Unity is a result, it's not a cover-up. We have to be united from inside. And Allah made this clear in the Quran when He said, وَأَطِيعُ اللَّهَ وَأَطِيعُ الرَّسُولِ You know, sometimes it's important to take a break. We need to take a break. Take a break from what? From the everyday things to look at what we're really doing as Muslims. That's why we said we really need to have this program for you and for me to take a break right here on Huda TV. Stay with us because we've got a lot coming up.
on Take a Break. And if you look into the early tafsir, early exegesis of the Quran, you will find that uh, all the Mufassirin were trying to find out where are these seven earths. Earthquakes, natural or artificial, can delineate the boundaries between seven different zones within the earth. The, the conclusion that we have seven different layers within the earth came to notes only in the 20th century. The true believer would prostrate down in obedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The blessings of that prostration will reach the seventh earth. Recite it every day and do read it loud. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh and welcome back with this segment we start practicing whatever we learned in the past in addition to today's rules. Uh, let me remind you with our phone number, AI code 0202 uh, 385 248 or 249 and we'll begin uh, reciting from verse number 99 to the end of Surah Al-Kahf inshallah. Uh, I will uh, be happy to take this phone call first from Sister Safia out of Nigeria and inshallah azajal we'll start practicing. Verse number 99, Sister Safia, welcome to the program. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. You have plenty of rocks in the next two verses, inshallah. Go ahead, Sister. فَإِذَا جَاءَ وَعْدُ رَجِّي جَعَلَهُ جَفَّا وَكَانَ وَعْدُ رَجِّي حَقَّا Let's pause here, sister. وَنَسَخَتْ يَوْمَئِذِ يَمُوجُ فِي دَأَتْ وَنَسَخَتْ السُّورِ فَجَمَعَنَا فِي جَمْعَا وَعَرَدْنَا جَهَنَّمَ يَوْمَئِذِ لِلْقَابِرِينَ عَرْضَا Sister Safiya, can you hear me? Can you hear me? Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum salam. Yes, I'm hearing. Wonderful. Now let's just uh, correct some slight mistakes there. Such as in, in the word Rabbi. It's not befitting to say Rabbi because the Ra is <laughs> very heavy. Mufakhama. Uh, I'm afraid we lost Sister Safiya, but inshallah I would like you to follow us uh, on your screen. Uh, as you said, Ra, rahmatum mir rabbi. So the ra is always mufakhama here because it has fatha. Jaa wa'du rabbi once again. And when we come to the word dakka, it is not dakka because there is a big difference between the kaf and the qaf. Sister Amina out of the USA. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. And welcome to the program. Once again, beginning with verse number 99, please. بالله من الشيطان الرجيم وتركنا بعضهم يومئذ يموج في بعض ونفخ في السور فجمعناهم جمعا وعرضنا جهنم يومئذ للكافرين عرضا إن شاء الله الذي عرضا الذين كانت أعينهم في غتاء في غتاء عن ذكر وكانوا لا يستطيعون سمعا فاتن ذا طاء لربد في غطاء because the طاء is one of the letters of الاستعلاء and التفخيم في غطاء الذين كانت أعينهم في غطاء عن ذكر وكانوا لا يستطيعون سمعا فحسب الذين كفروا أن كفروا أن يتخذوا عبادي من دوني أولياء إن أعتدنا جهنم للكافرين نزلا قل هل ننبئكم بالأخسرين أعمالا الذين ضل سعيهم في الحياة الدنيا وهم يحسبون أنهم يحسنون صنعا بارك الله فيك Thank you so much Sister Amina calling from the USA 
And now, we resume talking about these ahkam and practicing them. Verse number 99, Usama, please. Go ahead and read, and we need to tackle all the laws which are mentioned, and see whether they are mufakhama or muraqaqa, and what is the reason behind it. Okay. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان وتركنا بعضهم يومئذ يموج في بعض ونفخ في الصور ونفخ في الصور فجمعناهم جمعا. I actually like this type of yours, Osama, because now you taught us a lesson. Where once you said وَنُفِخَ فِي الصُّورِ The right here is مُفَخَّمَ Sakina Right? Because it is Sakina It's a presented Sukun And Preceded by Sukun Preceded by Sukun Preceded by another letter that has Dhamma So the right is automatically مُفَخَّمَ And then once again when he resumed reciting And without stopping at the right He applied its presented Kasra So he said وَنُفِخَ فِي الصُّورِ وَنُفِخَ فِي الصُّورِ فَجَمَعْنَاهُمْ جَمْعًا So the same letter, which is the ra, sometimes it becomes heavy when we start, and very thin, مُرَقَّقَ when he continued because of the effects of the kasra. Continue, Sama, please. Verse number 100. The first word also has ra and this ra مُفَخَّمَ because the fatha on top of it, وَتَرَكْنَا وَتَرَكْنَا And please, uh, the viewers, you need to pay attention to the letter that follows the ra, which is kaf. Okay. Should be more kaf. Imagine when you say wa tarakna skaf. Now you That's made the ta ta, and you made the kaf qaf. And tarakna is totally different than tarakna. Tarakna means what? Knock. knock. We knock on, hmm. right? Yes. But wa tarakna, yani we let alone. Yes. Continue, Sama, please. وَعَرَضْنَا جَهَنَّمَ يَوْمَئِذٍ لِلْكَافِرِينَ عَرْضًا Beautiful. Remember, because uh, the lamb is preceded by tanween, so there is idgham but without ghunna. We jump immediately from the that into, into the, lamb. Uh, La, the, lamb. the lamb without any ghunna. So we say, يَوْمَئِذٍ لِلْكَافِرِينَ يَوْمَئِذٍ لِلْكَافِرِينَ عَرْضًا Why? Because we drop the tanween completely. The ayn, ya shaykh, is muraqqaqa. Ar. The ayn is always muraqqaqa. Yes. The waw is always muraqqaqa. Is always thin. Wa'a. Wa'a. Aw. A'a. وَعَرَضْنَا جَهَنَّمَ يَوْمَئِذٍ لِلْكَافِرِينَ عَرْضًا Okay. Brother Muhammad from Egypt. And inshallah we'll resume with you, Usama, once again. Assalamu alaikum. Welcome to the program. Verse number 101 of Surah Al-Kahf. Please go on. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم الذين كانت أعينهم في غطاء عن ذكري وكانوا لا يص وكانوا لا يستطيعون سمعا أفحسب الذين كفروا أن يتخذوا عبادي من دوني أونياء إن أعتدنا جهنم للكافرين نزنا قل هل ننبئكم بالأخسرين أعمالا الذين ضل سعيهم في الحياة الدنيا وهم يحسبون أنهم يحسنون صنعا أولئك الذين كفروا بآيات ربهم ولقائه فحبطت أعمالهم فلا نقيم لهم يوم القيامة وزنا زك الله خيرا brother محمد the beginner here rather we have a professional reciter ما شاء الله thank you so much okay أسامة once again in in the last one minute I want you to read verse number one oh one. And let's see if we have any ra's with any tafkhim or tarqeeq. Alladhina kanat 
أعينهم في غطاء عن ذكري وكانوا لا يستطيعون سمعا. Okay. So we have here ذكري. Uh, exactly. The word ذكري. It's مرقب. Uh, look at the difference. There is را and, and there is ري. ري. Yes. So that is the difference between تفخيم and ترقيق. And ترقيق. ذكري. Obviously because it does not fall in any of the cases eight cases yes. which we studied. Basically it has كسرة. كسرة. Okay. And the last verse. أفحسب الذين كفروا أن يتخذوا عبادي من دوني أولياء إنا أعتدنا جهنم للكافرين نزلا the middle of the fossil, we agree to make it four. In Atadana Jahannamalil Kafirin and Uzula, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us against the fire of hell. May Allah forgive us our sins. May Allah teach us what we don't know and help us to act upon what we have learned. Wa sallallahu ala Sayyidina Muhammadin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam. Brothers and sisters everywhere, until next episode, I leave you in peace. والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته. Brothers and sisters, to increase your iman, read the miracle, recite the Quran, recite it every day and do read it loud. The verses of Quran are all Muslims pride. This miracle was revealed over a long time span. Sent from Allah to an angel, then to a man. That man was Muhammad, the best of creation. But we were chosen to be part of his nation. He gave us a message, and that was Islam. So read this miracle, recite the Quran. <laughs>